So earlier this week, uh, Intel bought a small foundry called Tower Semiconductor. And for those of you who aren't familiar with the vernacular, um, foundry is just a fancy word for a chip factory. And I think the reason we call them foundries instead of factories and gives them a fancy name is because these these foundries can cost up to $10 billion a piece. So they, you know, maybe they deserve their own name. But um, essentially, this is um, following on uh, the strategy of Intel to become an end to end foundry partner. OK, and what do I mean by that? So w- what it means is to be put in the position where they could make any kind of chip under the sun, OK, whether it's. RF, uh, radio frequency that requires certain technologies uh, like uh, silicon on insulator uh, as a material uh, or uh, doing photonics that uh, requires um, technologies like silicon germanium, high performance silicon germanium, uh, and and quite frankly, that don't require leading edge nodes. Um, And if you look at what Intel's capabilities are, it's leading, if not bleeding edge nodes and uh, technologies. And whether that's ribbon FET, uh, 20 angstrom uh, nodes and, and everything in between, that's actually perfect for the highest, uh, com- highest performance compute tiles. And if you compare that to what Tower offers is, think of, uh, think of modems, right? Uh, sorry, RF uh, that, that are inside of every smartphone, every PC, anything that's connected wirelessly requires an RF module. And that just requires a specialty type of technology and specialty type of of process. Sensors, visual sensors, heat sensors, radioactivity sensors, those are all the types of things that uh, Tower uh, manufactures. And um, this one is just extremely uh, straightforward here. But as we saw yesterday, and I'll go into uh, some of that uh, analysis a a little bit later, it it definitely folds into the Intel financial plan uh, really well in that uh, it is going to be accretive on uh, day one, at least at the uh, non-GAAP EPS uh, level. Not necessarily in the gross margin because their gross margins aren't that good uh, compared to uh, what what Intel does, but on the EPS line, uh, it will absolutely uh, bump it. It was a it was a it was a tuck in. I mean, when you're a company like Intel, five point four billion dollars is a is a tuck in. Uh, expected close twelve months. Uh, tune in for more details. So let me shift to uh, the Intel uh, Investor Day. Uh, Daniel, uh, you spent eight hours, nine hours. Uh, 14. 14 hours doing it. Uh, I think I spent four four hours online uh, with with one break. But you can go read the news. I mean, I'm literally just going to go through my opinion and, and my analysis uh, of this. So first of all, I still think Intel's strategy is, is the right strategy. High performance computing is what it does with leading edge nodes. Don't, don't yawn when I talk. Come on. Did that happen? That I, it may have. It may have been a ghost. Um, <laughs> this is this is premium content, dude. It is premium. Um, it's still uh, five a.m. though. Yeah. Pl- uh, the strategy: high performance computing, uh, regardless of what kind of chip it is, CPU, GPU, ASIC, uh, whatever it takes. Plus, uh, building uh, the foundry, which provides scale and enables the company to amortize their. Uh, their foundry, uh, sorry, their factory assets uh, better than just being an IDM. So execution uh, came across uh, and we had heard uh, Pat Gelsinger use the the word Grovian execution uh, style. What, what I'd like to see is they need to reinforce the, the say-do ratio. Daniel, you and I have talked about this with other companies. Uh, I give uh, Jim at Lattice, uh, he kind of burned this into my brain when I met him at uh, 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 I met him uh, when he was at AMD, uh, current CEO of Lattice. Um, I, I think it was a great articulation of open uh, in what they did. It was like, wow, this is really good. And when you add that to uh, IFS, to what they're doing in software, uh, which was kind of a shot across the bow to NVIDIA uh, with CUDA without actually using the word CUDA, uh, they got their point across. I did like the, uh, the, the difference between core markets and growth markets. No yawning. Stop that. 
stop. Get I'm not yawning. Coffee. I'm not yawning. Um, this is good content. Keep going. This uh, is great. Now, uh, what, what I'm looking forward to is is Pat said that they were going to break out the six businesses in in our in crazy detail. I literally want to see uh, how much money, for example, they're losing in graphics uh, right now. I want to see the crazy profitability that they have in Mobileye, right? And, and I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful that uh, maybe Wall Street gives them uh, a second or, 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 or third uh, look. I'm going to leave it at there because I've already talked for like four, four minutes uh, if you want to see my best analysis, <laughs> go on Twitter. I haven't written anything up yet. <laughs> well, you had a you had a nice piece on the tower deal for everybody, yeah, and you can get that on Forbes. And uh, listen, I'm going to touch on that really quickly. I mean, that was pretty straightforward, Pat. The tower deal, pretty straightforward. You know, you want to be, uh, you know, you want to have a foundry business. You can't miss thirty percent of the market, or I mean, you can, but when you're doing it, like Intel is trying to do it and trying to say, hey, we're offering a genuine alternative here on U.S. soil in Europe and, and then, of course, across Asia. You know, you have to be able to handle those old lagging nodes that, by the way, have been a huge strain on our supply chain. So if Intel is going to be part of the solution to the longer term uh, resiliency of, of the manufacturing of chips, handling that whole mix is going to be important to the company. Um, you know, having spent the day, uh, you know, I did all the breakouts in the morning, uh, as well as listening to the to the sessions in the afternoon. You know, it, there, I thought Pat did a really good job. He was super energetic. Uh, you could see his passion coming through. I think that's been pretty evident from the beginning with with him. You know, he loves this job. He certainly is a believer. He was going into these breakout rooms with the execs and. You know, we'd be asking the exact question and Pat would jump in and be char- I mean, he was just like he he wants to be out in front of these people. And and I really admire that. Um, you know, I think the say do thing that you mentioned is so important. I just think the street is going to wait until some of these things have come to fruition before they're gonna reward Intel. Um, you know, the Ann Kelleher, their EVP on pro on the process side, you know, was reiterating in the session, you know, parity by twenty-four, leadership by twenty-five. I think that's really what the market's waiting for. The problem, of course, is that you know Intel and, and its shareholders and its board are probably going to be a little frustrated if the price doesn't budge over the next couple of years. Um, but having said that, showing growth in all these areas, um, retaining market share, slowing down some of the bleed in some of the areas, uh, server, PC, where AMD have been so strong, making headway in AI, the mobile ideal and what ends up happening there, it's going to have, I think it'll give a short term jolt. And of course, Pat, I think I'll end on saying you and I both came to the conclusion that IFS could very well be another spinoff business if it grows big enough, fast enough. You got TSM uh, getting a 30 time multiple, uh, 30x forward earnings, whereas Intel's getting 10 right now. And just as a little perspective, and we'll talk about NVIDIA later, but Intel is, it's hard to not see it as value and being somewhat unappreciated. It sits at 10, it's trading at 10. I mean, basically the market is saying there's not a lot of confidence in its execution. And I'd say the more I listen, the more you'd say, it's hard to not believe Intel's going to be able to turn a corner here. Um, I think you said 23, Pat, is the year you really start to see um, maybe this starting to materialize a lot of this stuff. So I think that, you know, there there may be a little bit of a, of a delayed fuse, but it seems to be going in the right direction. It was a positive day. Um, I'd say about 90 percent of it I'd heard in some capacity. So most of it was uh, kind of like a little bits of addition here and there. But good to hear from the leadership. And by the way, their new CFO, really sharp, yeah. really, really sharp. Yes. Um, and, you know, talking about how to, you know, squeeze another point of margin out. Well, I've seen how the streets responded when margins compressed. So if they can get that another point out of it through creative finance, financial leadership, it could be really big for the company. Yeah. And Kate, can I clarify just one thing? Yeah. 2023 is where I see the product where they get access to TSMC chiplets. Okay. So not necessarily financial, uh, mostly from a product competitive uh, standpoint. Okay. No, thanks for clarifying that. I just, I remembered you saying that. So yeah. I was trying, I, I don't want to put So you actually do listen to what I say. Oh my gosh. Oh, yeah, listen, I might be yawning, but I still hear you. 